Hello, my beautiful and inquisitive, enlightened friends. Welcome back to Alien Protocols. On this episode, we're going to dive right into a subject that's um, one that's really not spoken about. At least aspects of it are not. And um, it starts with a comment that Putin just made um, a couple days ago. If not a couple days ago, it was yesterday. <clears throat> um, he said um, something to the effect of they have deployed hypersonic missiles um, into the area, I guess, and then uh, weapons that operate on a new principle of physics. Which sounds to me like a hint about anti-gravity systems. I don't know what <clears throat> you guys think, but this brings up a point, and it's integrated in this subject, about that type of craft, but also powering it, and nuclear propulsion systems. We really don't hear much at all about nuclear propulsion. But if you think about the history of nuclear <clears throat> power, um, you realize that <clears throat> nuclear energy has been used for all sorts of things aside from reactors and submarines and aircraft carriers. And that propulsion <clears throat> is just and was just an inevitability. Now, I'm sure you guys remember back uh, in 1980, there was an incident called the Cash Landrum Incident, where a large uh, diamond-shaped craft um, flew over the road and near these ladies and their son, and they all got uh, radiation exposure completely confirmed medically. Uh, the road was tore up and taken away and repaved. Uh, trees on the sides of the road were also taken away, and uh, yet still radiation was detected in the area, and on their vehicle as well. So we know that propulsion system was a very dirty nuclear propulsion system. And in fact, I have spoken to the person <clears throat> who was the head of the nuclear propulsion organization within the government. And um, it's not a huge secret who the person is, but I'm not going to, you know, blather it out now. <clears throat> but I'm of a very strong belief that that very large vehicle and its propulsion system was most likely created with his knowledge. And it was a big craft and had a big plume of fire shooting out of the bottom of it from the engine. And you can imagine, this is back in 1980, that the shielding for a nuclear power plant inside a craft like that would be very heavy. It would make the craft very heavy and therefore need even more propulsion power. So almost 50 years later, 42 years later, you can imagine that nuclear propulsion is at a whole new level of efficiency and everything. Not just the propulsion aspect, but also the power aspect. It doesn't need, you know, thousands of pounds of shielding. And this brings us <clears throat> to several points of not the hypersonic missiles that are being flown. I, I think this whole nuclear propulsion aspect that's going on in the US and China and Russia is very bad for all life because these weapon systems and craft release radioactivity in their propulsion in their just regular course of flight but also the danger of them crashing and spreading more this is just a toxicity and a pollution and a poison that lasts for you know generations upon generations mutating and destroying life. It's really a crime and it should be outlawed 
like uh, other uses of nuclear uh, material is. Um, so now let's kind of transition into the anti-gravity aspect of some of this stuff. There are several different ways, from my understanding, to attain uh, anti-gravity. And one of the, the very first and easiest way is more of a gravity nullification system. And this involves incredibly high levels of uh, electromagnetic energy put into basically giant magnets. And a award-winning engineer named Boyd Bushman uh, conducted an experiment at Lockheed. I'm pretty sure it was Lockheed. Uh, where he took two gigantic, two very large neodymium magnets and uh, put a hole through the center of them and bolted them together with this huge bolt. Now, these big magnets are super dangerous. If you get your finger caught between them and it slams closed, you are, you know, your finger's squished. But if you flip one of the magnets over the other way, the repulsive force is incredibly strong. And so a huge ass bolt was needed to uh, press them together against that incredible force. And he said he dropped um, two versions, one ha that had the uh, two neodymiums, giant neodymiums in it, bolted together, and another one that weighed the same, and they're both the same shape. And they, he dropped it off a building there at um, Lockheed and um, the one with the magnets always landed second. It had a slight gravity nullification property. And apparently he won a little, uh, kind of a secret uh, award for that. So that's something that probably won't be, you know, admitted by the government or Lockheed for many years. But that same principle is the principle that's used in this gravity nullification system. And this has been used and is created by the US, China, and Russia. And it's, uh, you have to have a lot of energy and it creates a very large magnetic field that's repulsive, two of them that are repulsed against each other. And, um, I found out, and I think it's still true, is that there is a limit to the type of how powerful you can get magnets in the United States. Of course, um, you can create electromagnets to, you know, almost unlimited levels, as much as a magnetar, basically. Um, but uh, magnetic field strength is measured, the largest kind of measurement is called a Tesla. And um, you're not allowed to get above 3.0 Teslas. In fact, I think it might even be you're not allowed to have 3.0. <clears throat> anyway, this um, type of anti-gravity, from my understanding, it's really more of a nullification. So this incredibly strong, you get a, a magnet, a ring magnet or a ring electromagnet, and it creates this field that looks basically like this. It runs all the way around. There's a north and a south pole, a north on the top of this thing here, and a south on the bottom, and the field lines go around like that. And they go around creating kind of a uh, sort of a torus shape. Now you can take two of those and put them together here and have them be on the repulsive side and slam them together and you get this effect at a much higher level. And uh, this shape and this effect is much greater and much more efficient at nullifying gravity when you get higher and higher power levels. And in the center of this, and this, these two donuts, these two toruses, there's a shape that's viable here. If you can imagine this kind of shape, and from above it would look kind of like a, 
you know, from above it would look kind of like a circle and a dot in the center. But it really is a, a pointed fin all the way around. That's the this a slightly safer zone of um, in the dielectric field. Um, you're going to have this area that's slightly safer. Anyway, you can imagine a craft shaped that way to sit in the safer area where a life form could actually be in. And you can have two of these uh, electromagnets on top of each other, basically. And this shape on the inside would be this safer zone. Because once you get to really high uh, magnetic strength, it can damage, you know, everything in your body. Your iron in your blood it can damage your eyes. It can completely, you know, screw you up. So in order to do this kind of a, um, a craft, they have to you know, stack them on top of each other like this. And then you can put whatever you want in terms of a shape around it. It can be like a giant tic-tac kind of a shape. It can be two really long ones inside a tic-tac kind of a shape. And there's a wide variety of different types of shapes that would be conducive. A lot of different types of shapes could be conducive for this type. And when you look at some craft from UFO history, here's some here. There's different types of shapes that would be viable. But let's look at the uh, Tic Tac event, shall we? Remember how the Tic Tac had this little L-shaped thing on the bottom? Now, remember, gravity nullification just shuts off the gravity's effect on the craft. So now it's basically in a frictionless little bubble. And a tiny push will deliver a tremendous amount of speed and force. It's completely in this frictionless little field. Really incredible. So, remember they had the little L-shaped thing? If this little L-shaped thing could spin any direction like that, and even point down, you know, or different angles up and down, just that alone, one of these could point this craft any direction, and the craft would zip that direction. But let's look at some of the difficulties of this kind of a craft. It has a huge energy demand to power, you know, three Tesla electromagnets. There's gonna be the weight of the nuclear shielding. There's going to be the way to protect the pilots, which most likely would be some kind of intense, heavy-duty uh, Faraday cage, which basically means surrounding them with um, a copper shield, essentially. Um, there needs to be shielding for all the electronics in this kind of craft, because uh, you know, a magnetic field that strong would screw up all sorts of stuff. There has to be directional controls, so you can point this craft in whatever direction you want it to go. And it'd have to be directional propulsion. Even if it's a tiny amount, it would make the craft go incredibly fast. Now, you can presume nuclear power for the huge energy requirements, although there have been some other types of reactors that have come online in the past few years that might be able to deliver high enough energy requirements. And you can imagine that there's a lot more efficient nuclear shielding now if they are using the nuclear power source. We know they can protect the pilots now with the type cages. The electronic shielding can also be done if all the wiring is done inside. Essentially, each wire is done inside of its own little kind of Faraday tube. And directional controls and directional propulsion can be achieved several different ways. Even traditional propulsion would make this craft go just, you know, whizzing fast as heck. Faster, far faster than any jets. So once you overcome this huge energy requirement, the rest of these can kind of fall into place. And from Putin's recent admission, it sounds like a very strong hint about anti-gravity. And I have a sneaking suspicion that 
uh, U.S. and I mean, you know, Russia and China have done um, what they seem to be incredibly efficient at is spy work to have stolen quite a bit of the information, although certainly they don't have all of our secrets in terms of that area. But there's also two other ways, from my understanding, of how you can go into anti-gravity. And uh, I believe the uh, U.S., and China likely have this second level. And uh, we'll go into that in another video because this one's at 15 minutes now. But what do you guys think about nuclear propulsion in general and how dangerous it is? What do you think about the possibility that Russia does have some anti-gravity stuff and how advanced do you think it is? And how advanced do you think the US and China's gravity nullification programs are. I would love to hear your thoughts. Much love from a skinny little dude.